Hey everybody, so I am actually live and I'm going to hop on here when Ollie, when it notifies me that Ollie's on, he's going to join in here so we can talk about what I've been doing over the last two months. And I am legit sitting in my car because if I go in my office right there, the phone's going to ring, the computer's going to blow up and I'm not going to be able to do this live video. So let me, uh, go this way somehow bear with me. I have to add Ollie to this and we uh, can get him on here in just a minute, hopefully. But anyways, let's talk about until then. Let me see if I can get him going. Ollie, where you be? Right now it's okay, guys. I put me up myself on quiet mode. There we go. Okay, Ollie, here we go. Get on here. Hopefully. There you are. Yay. Hey. I had How's it, it totally on. I had it on quiet mode and I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. I couldn't see you. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's see. Like some people, some of my friends or people might be, they might tune in. Some might, oh, you're sideways. There you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. So I was explaining like before I am legit in my car and right there's my office because if I go in there, then the computer's going to blow up. The phone's going to start ringing and I'm not going to be able to do this video. So I am legit sitting in the car, which is comical because it goes part of the course of what you've been helping me deal with. So I guess the first thing I want to start. So my friends know, cause they've seen me tag you in things. They've seen me mention you on my post and, um, I want you, and I know a lot of them will probably watch this later too. So we're just going to keep going with it, but I want you to introduce yourself and tell them what it is that you do. Okay. Have I got purple lips? <laughs> no, I can't. I'm not wearing well, lipstick. I've just had frozen blueberries. I'm like, hang on, I've got purple lips. <laughs> great. You're an Oompa Loompa. It's great. Yeah. I'm not wearing lipstick. It's frozen blueberries. I eat blueberries. Um <laughs> I'm Ollie and I've been coaching Katie from over here in the UK. It's been what, three months now? Something like that? I think I think it's going on about three months, yeah. Yeah. And I was I was actually speaking to another client today and what he signed up I've got dogs. I say Ollie has dogs, it's fine, they're used to my dogs. You're good. Well what he signed up for is completely different to what I actually offer now. So when it comes up to it it was the personal training side of things. And I absolutely cringe when I get called a personal trainer. No offense to people that are personal trainers, but I've been there, I've done the gym work, and it's more in-depth than what people would typically class as a personal training session. Absolutely. And a lot more in-depth. It's what I call health optimization and accountability coaching, where a lot of people will chuck a food plan out or chuck an exercise routine. Sometimes we're not even ready to exercise and with sort of like, gone for it so hard with stress elsewhere we want to make sure that hang on we're treating ourselves with respect so i help people love themselves more than they actually realize they could i think I that's say. i think you explain it so much more elegantly than i would <laughs> i've never explained it like that before I was like, hang on. That was, that's pretty good <laughs> yeah so I'll, i'm gonna start doing it that way <laughs> that so, was really yeah, good I help people love themselves more than they actually realize they could Mm -hmm. And that is actually by becoming healthy. And it's not these crash diets and it's not, oh, we're going to cut all these foods. It is one step at a time. You said it yesterday or when we chatted that I get you to do things without realizing you're actually doing them. And that's not a bad thing. It's good right. because you don't feel you're restricted and you don't feel like there are loads of other things going on, which stop you from getting the results. Right. And I think the, the biggest thing for me was, um, it's funny because I tell you, everybody's path is different and mine's definitely different than if someone else, you know, gets a hold of you and does, goes down their own path. My path was different. My biggest hurdle was actually eating consistently. And for years I've done like crash diets. And in the past I have done the meal plans and I've ate every two hours and yeah, I feel better, but my life just doesn't, you know, it's really, really hard to maintain that. Exactly. <clears throat> And, and then I feel really, really guilty when I don't maintain it. And then, so then what I would do is like go kill myself on the, the cardio equipment or in the gym and try to offset that. And then explain about how, you know, cause you're like, Katie, you're just digging a deeper hole. And I think the first thing I want to point out in this is 
you actually, not that you forbid me from exercising, but you were like, no. And I'm like, yeah. what do you mean, no? <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I was there before. I've done bodybuilding shows. I've done endurance work. And I've done a lot of things over, what, 12 years in the industry. And in your early 20s, it's great. You can just work harder in the gym. <laughs> you they they want to be in like... Gym. You can cut your food a little bit. And it's all gravy. It's all good. And then suddenly life catches up with you. We deal with the stress in our life and we try and fight psychological stress with going to the gym with physiological stress. Right. And that actually digs the hole too deep. I don't know what my dog is seeing. I think there must be a cat outside or something. Um, <laughs> let's just give him a second just to be a bit quiet. Damn thing. It's this like why, kids. When, when my wife's home, they're out of their crates. But when, when we're on a call, I'll put them in their crates, but she feels guilty. But <laughs> yeah, so people dig the hole so deep. And there's only so much we can recover. Every time we train, every time we have stress in our lives, whether that's work, whether that's relationships, whether it's just health issues elsewhere, think of it like a glass. Every time this stress comes in, we take a mouthful. And before you know it, that glass gets empty. And the body can only fill so much up each day. And yeah. a lot of people don't actually start the day with a full glass. I, I'm, I was extremely guilty. So even some of my friends don't realize the intense schedule that we keep. Um, I think because uh, we cover it very well. Like I, I yeah. cover it very well. And when you had me write down my what a normal day would be and you were like, Katie, this is insanely busy. This is a crazy, yeah. crazy schedule. And I'm like, really? You think so? Like, I, I'm sure we could, like, I could shove some more in there. And you're like, no, 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 don't work out. And that was what threw me off the first. I'm like, what do you mean, don't work out? Yeah, what? I hired the trainer and he told me not to train. I guess. I'm like, this guy, I'm paying this guy to tell me not to work out. This is perfect. No, no, no. But you, you, you know, your niche, if you will, is for busy, busy entrepreneurs and busy people um, that are going 190 miles an hour. So you're not, you're not like the... Weight Watchers, the, I hate to name one, but you know, you're not a, you're not the eight to four, maybe needs a little bit. You're, you're for the high paced people, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Very high paced. And there's potentially been some problems because of the, how long you've been pushing your adrenals, how long you've been stressing your body out. You can't go through a marathon trying to sprint the whole way. You're going to have to stop. And too many people still try and do it. We live in this hustle and grind mentality, this world of hustle and grind. And it's cool. There's a time and a place to do it, but we have to give back to our bodies. We have to respect ourselves. And we, we met through Rick Barker, through, through mm -hmm. my client Rick Barker, and the, the guy that you knew for the music industry blueprint. And he was a prime example. And you look at his busy day, he didn't have time to exercise and said, well, can you give me 10 minutes? Right. And literally just a 10 minute walk on the treadmill while he's doing his emails with how we started and, He's lost, he hasn't just done the 10 minutes exercise. He's ended up doing some different classes as well, but he's dropped 30 pounds in six months. However, right. if I'd have just chucked four or five workout sessions a week at him and said, eat exactly these foods, he doesn't follow it plan. He follows rules, guidelines, as we've built up with you. And he's dropped the weight over time. Now, some people's body is, aren't ready to go into this deficit, go into the caloric deficit we need to drop the fat it adds more stress, which then the health goes down, the immune functions go down, there may be a lot more inflammation in the system. So people get so stressed out about, hang on, I'm beating my body up, I need to go harder, I need to eat less. As you said before about, it was a battle and you were kind of beating yourself <laughs> each time, I can eat less, I can work harder. Right. And you end up getting so frustrated. And then after a couple of weeks of doing it, you have a big blow eat. And it's, it's just a complete stress overall. Right. Well, I mean, I was horrible for a couple years ago. I looked like I was in the best shape of my life, but I was the queen of sugar cookie dough and Mountain Dew. And <laughs> that it was a lie. I mean, like you put a video up, I think today about, you know, whatever your I can't remember the title was, but I was like, man, that's like spot on because I looked the best I've ever looked, but nutrition wise, it sucked. And so my problem was, and, and I've, helping you've helped me come out of that shell a little bit to talk about it more. So my problem wasn't necessarily, I think people can be maybe a little like I am on the bigger side, even though you're starving yourself. And that's definitely my problem. Wasn't that it was, I wasn't eating enough. And so 
you can tell more about the science than I can about all that. But um, that was the biggest, I think maybe the biggest hurdle that we had in the beginning was you were like, you have to take a picture every three meal, like eat three meals, Katie. That's all I want. Three meals. I'm like, what? That was hard. We didn't even say, look, let's not even worry about what these meals are. Let's just have three meals. Yep. You told me you're like, if you want to eat a cheeseburger. Yeah. You're like, if if it's a cheeseburger, eat a cheeseburger, just eat three meals. It's, it's building up. And if you think about a car, now, first off, if you want to get a car from A to B, you have to put gas in it. You have to put fuel in that car. So that way I said gas rather than petrol, even though I'm here in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have to put gas in your car. Now, you can have the premium gas or you can have the store's standard gas. Chances are it is going to get you there from A to B. One will get you there with a little bit cleaner engine, a little bit cleaner every single part of the car, but they're still going to get you there. So first off, we want to make sure you can actually arrive at your destination and we need fuel for that. The trouble is people are trying to run their cars, which is already on red. It's already on empty and they're still trying to take fuel out of it and get to the destination. And a lot of people as well, they try and go straight from A to Z. They forget about going to B, C, D, E, F and so on. They forget about the small steps in between, which we're focused on these first off let's get fueled in let's get the habits changed and let's get the mindset to where we need to be to build it up Edie's just signed on as well and Edie is an encyclopedia on this stuff and um it's amazing when like she could literally sit here for like two three hours and talk about the biochemistry and the brain and everything that is built up of the world we live in and a lot of people when we say about we need to do this this and that they get overwhelmed so let's just start with one thing and build up from there yeah, I think, and then the biggest thing, people have been like, well, people have asked me, well, how much weight have you lost? And I'm like, well, okay, urge, stop. Yeah. <laughs> because my, um, I don't want to know how much, if I've lost, I don't want to know that. Actually, my hurdle is stay off the scale. Yes. I actually haven't stood on the scale for, for actually a long time, which was reverse of what I was doing. And um, that's a big hurdle for me. And it's not so much about for me, for my journey and everybody's different. That's what I want to point out. Like what works for me or what I'm battling, maybe the next person is totally different. I've gone down the inches. Like I'm, I'm almost to the point where I have to make a new notch in my belt. I've gone down like three belt loops. So I'm going to have to make another new notch. People forget about these things as well. One of the biggest programs for health in the entire world is called weight watches it's telling you to watch your weight it's not telling you to watch your energy watch your focus watch your feelings watch your belt notch watch your dress size or anything like that it's telling you to watch your weight so people have been brought up by marketing to actually see success in health as yeah. watching their weight however right. you can drop weight and become a lot worse with your health a lot more unhealthy than you started and that's something which we do need to be mindful of and it's not saying that dropping weight isn't healthy. You can do it. But setting the foundations first before you go to build that skyscraper is always going to get a better result in the end. Well, and I think the other thing is with uh, over the last three months, I haven't denied myself. No. If I wanted to have maybe a piece of pizza, I had a piece of pizza. <laughs> I just took a picture and be like, this is what it is. It is what it is. Like, hey, I'm just proud that I was eating three meals, you know. But now we've tweaked a little bit. We've, you know, you've tweaked, you know, you're slowly tweaking. And you are so, I told someone today, I said, he's so elegant in how he suggests something. Well, why don't you try this, you know? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, okay. And then it works. And I'm like, the, the gluten thing was a big one with yourself. Now, it's not yeah. to say gluten is the devil for every single person. I personally, if I have a lot of it, I'll react. Now, I just keep gluten out because I personally feel better with 100% gluten out of it. But there will be times, like we had Easter here, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to deal with the consequences. I want a couple of bits of bread. I'll have bread, I'll blow up for two or three days, my body will be better (laughs) after like four or five days, and yeah, we're cool. So it's to be prepared to know what it's going to do to your body. Now, with you, if I'd have said straight away about cutting gluten out, to see if you notice the difference, then straight away, cutting gluten out would have been overwhelming. However, oh, yeah. we built some habits first, and then we said, let's try to see what gluten does to you. And I think you said, I couldn't, uh, there was a restaurant, I was like, look, just ask. We have menus at the restaurant, and now you said you go on, on the apps on the phone, and you get yep. the things off the menus off the internet, you filter the allergens, and men, oh, restaurants are used to 
people asking for alternatives to food, different ingredients, cutting the dairy out. It's the modern day world we live in means they have to accommodate. If not, you can go somewhere else and they do. It. Right. And like, like people are like, oh, well, don't you miss out? So he, I told Ollie over the weekend we were traveling and we had to eat out and everything. And I, for those watching, I didn't even look at the traditional menu that they gave me. I was like, no, I don't need one. I just typed in the restaurant we were and I was like gluten free. And then it had like 10 selections. And in my mind, I'm like, these are the 10 selections that I get. And that's fine. I mean, I did not leave hungry by any means. So those were the 10 selections that I got. And I, I have to say like that the day before that I wasn't totally gluten free. Like I told you, because I had to be at a show at a certain time and I had to work it. And then I had to, okay, the alternative was don't eat or run through this drive through and make the best decision that I can make <laughs> at this time. Now in the past, I would have just not ate. I'd have been like, oh, I, I'm just not going to eat. You know, if I can't stick to this meal plan or stick to this strict schedule, I'm just not going to eat. But you've helped me realize, no, you know, it's, like, it's not always a perfect world. It's not always a per perfect situation, especially when you're like us, like you're traveling a lot. We travel a lot. And sometimes it's just not practical. And people are like, oh, well, you'll make the time. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm just not that kind of person, I guess. I don't know, but okay. Yeah, it's, we do live in a busy world, and you live in some crazy other busy world, which is busier than the busy, busy people in this busy world. <laughs> and yeah. if, if we look at, like, we'll take Rick for an example again, because he does a lot of traveling. He was at Can uh, in Canada for the launch and different other artist things and stuff like that. And what we've built up with him is that there are different options that you can get from fast food places. Especially mm -hmm. over in America, it's a lot better than where, where I am here in Norwich. Like we were in London yesterday and traveling around, we ended up having Chipotle and it allows you to select good things. It allows you to select bad, bad things, but just the awareness of what is going to be beneficial for you. It is a matter of self-respect and it's not to say you can't have something bad uh, right. every now and then. As you say, you have pizza. I love having my nachos and chili with cheese and stuff like that every now and then. And that and peanut butter, just buy the spoonful and rice cakes and stuff like that, which are healthy, but healthy if you only eat a little bit of it. And it, it's nice to treat yourself to something every now and then. But I live by that 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, if you respect yourself, if you're on as much point as possible, then 20% of the time you can chill out. And that goes with not just food with health and things like that uh when, when i used to work with a lot of world-class endurance athletes and one of the triathletes i worked with won the ultraman world championship and you look at his training 80 percent of the time he's not training ridiculously hard it's about building the foundations and building the base levels and the skill so we're training your brain 80 percent of the time just to relax enjoy life be present and get that balance there and 20 percent of the time you can actually just have anything not have to worry about it and i like what you said it's like it's not about the right now like it's not about uh, you want to teach someone a lifestyle to maintain mm -hmm. over a course of time so someone doesn't just drop 30 pounds and then you know in six months or whatever they put 30 plus 10 back on or whatever exactly. because they've just done this crazy thing with their body if I use my first ever bodybuilding diet, for example, jumping on a bodybuilding stage, I lost like, it was about three stones. So what's that? 14, 28, about 45 pounds in 12 weeks. I looked shredded. I came second place. I've got a plastic trophy up there to prove it. And <laughs> then afterwards, my body was just giving up on me. It was dropping muscle, putting on fat. I was like, look, it's got to stop here. But then afterwards, I put on about 60 pounds in about eight weeks. And that was just by going back to what I thought was maintaining my maintenance amount of calories. Your body is something where we're lucky to have this shell that has been given us to live our lives in. We, we should be respecting it to a degree. Yeah. And, and then I always you talked degree. about to a degree. Yeah. 80, 20. Yeah. Um, you talked about calories in it. Sometimes it's not always about calories in calories out. You uh, made a video nice about that. that. The world. Uh, and the world that we live in, and a lot of fitness professionals will probably moan so much when I say it's not necessarily about calories in versus calories out. First off, you have to get to the stage where it is, and it can be as simple as eating a little bit less than you need uh, to drop fat or eating a little bit more than you need to put on weight. But uh, when we get the individuals that I work with, 
that, like yourself, ridiculously busy, been ridiculously stressed, not just for a week or two weeks, or done a bodybuilding prep, like I, it would have been me from like putting that 60 odd pounds back on, I, I could lose that from just taking a couple of weeks to chill and then getting back on the plan. No, we've done more damage than can be repaired in a week. And whether we like to admit that or not, that's the truth when it comes to the stress that we've been sprinting for longer and we need to walk in order to catch our breath. So saying that you need to just drop calories, but if we'd have said to you, you need to drop calories, you're already eating about six, 700 calories a day probably. Mm -hmm. So where are we going to go when we get to 300 calories? Right, just Jeff. Fast for 24 <laughs> hours a day, seven days a week. Right. And that's what and I think. Like I, I didn't think I was that busy until I mapped it out and, you know, like I said, some people that I'm around don't realize, I guess we, I hide it well. So my normal day would be, I get up just like everybody else. And I still have the mom duties and the house duties. Yeah. I'm still doing all that. I get up, I go to the barn, I take care of my horses. Then I haul Madison to school. Then I go to work. Um, then my work's been really, really crazy stressful. And on top of work, then I'm helping other things. So it's either music or family business or helping with the nonprofit stuff. And, um, then we do a radio show every night. So then Steve and I are doing a radio show every night. I'm hauling Madison. I still have to do barn work. And like when I mapped all that out, I'm like, holy crap, this is really, really crazy busy. And I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't, I was just dragging really, really bad. I had some health things happen. And uh, now I sleep. Like it's amazing what sleep does for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the first step. When, uh... As I said, when I've done body, I don't compete anymore. I've got no intention to ever chuck on fake tan and pose and trunks again in my life and do that stupid dieting or anything like that. I got the pictures. That's cool. Now, when I look at what I used to do then, it would be I would have to get up at 4.30 or 5 to do an hour's cardio. That's regardless of if I was on a late shift at the gym, a late shift in the corporate world, and I went to bed at 9 or midnight. It would be always get up at that time. Now it's okay, I'm in a position that I've built up. It's not to say I'm lucky to be in this position. I've built up to be in this position where I can sleep in a little bit later if I want to. I can go to bed a little bit later so I can be more flexible, but it's had to build up to that position. And now if I would go back, I would tell my younger self to say, look, screw that hour of cardio, get that extra hour of sleep because it's going to be so much more beneficial long-term for your health. And we think that okay, we can sleep eight hours. You don't necessarily need eight hours. It's a good figure to have. I feel better on eight, seven to mm -hmm. eight hours. And people also will say, oh, well, I can get by on five hours. Okay, you can get by on five hours. But would you be able to thrive if you had six, seven or eight hours? And how would you feel after consistently doing that? And a lot of people with sleep as well will get up two, three times during the night and think it's normal, which isn't normal. Mm-mm. Yeah. And that's my biggest thing is I wasn't sleeping. And now I'm my, like my mind's clear. That's mm -hmm. one thing I've told you. I'm like, my mind is clear. I'm able to focus on things. I'm able to get my tasks done that I need to get done. And I, I said, I wasn't going to say this on here, but I was like, when we were on the live video yesterday, I was like, all you made me lazy, but in a yeah. good way. <laughs> yeah. I think we, we, first off, we were trying to get you to meditate. It's not saying everyone should meditate, but look, <laughs> let's just have five minutes on the headspace app. And then your daughter, Madison ended up doing yeah. it before you. Yeah, and now she's like knocking out of the park, and I'm still like horrible at it. But I told, but like, my updates to you are like, I sat down and watched TV for like ten minutes. Yeah, I did nothing. That's a big yeah. step. <laughs> we, we do also get those people the other end of the spectrum who say they're really busy. They map out their day, and they're like, "Did you see?" Game them yet? I have actually been too busy for it. And those same people are those guys that say that. And then you were the one that said you were busy and the guys that I work with say they're busy and actually are busy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, I sat down for 10 minutes today. I'm so proud of myself or, yeah. you know, and even Steve's like, he's like, wow. Okay. You actually sat down and watched this. But, and then I'm like, okay, but you know, it's, it's just a different mindset. It's just even having you. Um, so over the weekend, I had an event over the weekend and I was able to send you and be like, I'm so frustrated because I don't think anything looks good. Nothing fits. And I'm just stressed. And rah, 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 rah. And you were like, it's okay. And that sounds dumb, but like that really helped. Like you're like, it's okay. It's what I'm here for. Just, and then I'm like, okay, I can do this. Okay. Off I go. You know? And it is about that accountability. It's one thing being the health optimization coach, being a trainer, being a fit pro, or whatever people want to call it, nutritionist, whatever. But the accountability is the thing people forget about. 
a lot of the times when it comes to clients, I don't tell them anything they don't already know. As funny as that sounds, people should true. know how to be healthy. But just like even Rick, the first message he said to me, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I know what to do. I need you to tell me to do it. And then he's <laughs> up two hours later. You think, okay, these are the people, the action takers. It'd be great to have 10 people like you, 10 people like Rick, and just sign up and go for it and actually get the results there. Everyone is different. So what works for you isn't necessarily going to work for Rick. What works for Rick isn't necessarily going to work for the next person, which is why I've built up the reputation that I've built up. And I get the results that I've got purely because of the fact it is on an individual basis. And every single path of working with you for three months before we then dropped out gluten to see how good you feel without gluten in there isn't necessarily going to be the path I have to take with other people. And some people may want an eating plan as much as they don't feel they're the best way to do it. Some people may want that because they like a structured life in their business. I personally think that we need a bit of flexibility because we don't want to get those obsessive behaviors where you can't be flexible when you need to be flexible. But every single person is an individual. Right. And I think that's, I want to point out, like, that's my problem. Like I get a little obsessive about it. That's why you were just like eat three times a day because I will get obsessive about exercising. I will get obsessive about strict eating. And like, I will deny myself something. If someone says, don't do that. I'll be like, okay, I got it. And I'll, yeah. I'll starve instead of, you know, to, to stick to that. So this way has been able to, i still can drink a Dr. Pepper or, you know, I had some Easter candy or if I want to, but it was funny because yesterday I was on this um, trip. Uh, it was like a leadership program and we had to go see different places. And we end up in this restaurant and it was like free um, ice cream, like good mm -hmm. homemade ice cream. The good and stuff. Yeah. The good stuff, like the really <laughs> fattening stuff and everybody was getting their ice cream and I was perfectly, perfectly content to not have any. Yeah. And they were like, aren't you going to have any? I'm like, well, I had this, um, I had this, this bread. So in my mind, I'm like, I had the bread and a little bit of the gluten. No, I'm like, no, I don't want to, I'd hate to throw that on my system to see what happens. But, and it, it, like, I wasn't missing out at all. I didn't deny myself. I, I just picked and chose what I ate. If that makes sense. Yeah. So that's the biggest sense. thing. Like when I'm not denying do... myself. Yeah. And when people do deny themselves and they go on such a strict diet, which I've been in the past and it's given, it gave, gave me an eating disorder, which is more like exercise and uh, anemia and very obsessive eating where I would then binge out on a Saturday, but be really great from Sunday to, uh, to Friday. And then Saturday afternoon, I would just binge out. It would be very bad behaviors. And then a lot of people do this in the society we live in. And that's why people get the Monday morning feeling. They eat good Monday to Friday. So their body is cleansed by, say, Wednesday, Thursday. They start feeling good on Thursday, feel great on Friday, and then go out, have a takeout, go out and have drinks on a Friday night. They're actually used to having a certain time and schedule during the week, and then they stay up late on the Friday, get up late on the Saturday. So they're kind of jet-lagged, do it again on the Saturday, get up, stay up even later on the Saturday night, get up later on the Sunday, have a really big fried breakfast or something, uh, and then they end up go, trying to push their body to sleep early on the Sunday, which you can't do because it's thinking it's only been up 10 hours, just like you would do after mm -hmm. you've been jet lagged. The Monday morning, it's feeling really groggy and you think, oh, it's Monday again. Yeah, because you've done it to yourself. Then you start right. to get up at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. whenever your alarm clock goes off, struggle to get up. Then you start doing the same thing over and over again. And by Wednesday, Thursday, his body's a bit more detoxed, which it does naturally. doesn't need to have those detox teas and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, it gets to Thursday, Friday, and you're back into that routine. But, yeah, you just repeat the cycle. Yeah, it's, it's because people don't realize what they're doing that they think, oh, it's Monday again. And right, oh, I got the Monday I drag. Have bad days and stuff like that. It's, it's not to say I am a human being. I have bad days, and, and that's that's something that a lot of people don't admit with the social media world we live in everything is all good and um everything like roses like poo smelling like roses and all that sort of stuff everyone's farting rainbows and things and unicorns are everywhere but it's the real world is that everyone has bad days and mm -hmm. it's where it's been but usually there's a reason for them is it that you didn't get that much sleep hence why you're craving more sugar did you not get as much hydration hence why you're craving more salty foods are you a little bit more stressed elsewhere? 
So you're searching for things like chocolate, which are going to give you a bit more of a dopamine release and make you feel good. And it, even like, as we've said with women, that is there going to be more of a sugar um, craving when you're on your period? And you're saying, okay, actually, I crave more when I'm on my period. Yeah, because your body's using more blood sugars. Right. And that's the stuff like I like about having you because you were like, I want to know any change, any little change, Katie, let me know. Like, because yeah. there's a rhyme or reason to it. So that's like, a, that's why I like having you sort of, it's like you're in the, you're in the back pocket. You'd be like, Hey, Ollie, this is what's happening. What? And you're like, okay, well, we're going to tweak this a little bit or add this Himalayan salt to your water from now on, or which has been huge. That's been huge, yeah, by the way. Small little tweak of adding Himalayan, like, huge. Rock, Himalayan rock salt. You don't realize how many minerals you get just from that. And okay, we could go down the, the, the route of getting loads of supplements in there and stuff like that. But people are on a budget nowadays. And like mm -hmm. my coaching isn't the cheapest, but it pays for itself when it comes to the results. Now, if I it take does. in loads and loads <laughs> of supplements, then it isn't going to be something which is going to be affordable with a people's budget already being stretched a bit. Now, is there a time and a place? Maybe, but. Right now, we want to get the results as quickly as possible. That's not saying quick results. We want to get them as quickly as possible and get your health really being optimized. And I think that it's um, it, this is an investment. This isn't like a 30 yeah. days you're going to drop 50 pounds and you're going to be like those commercials on TV. This is really truly for a, a small circle that I have of people that really, really want to invest in themselves. Like I'm in this for the long haul. Like I don't want to keep living the way I was living before. That's just, I don't want to do that. And I don't want Madison to see me living that way. Um, I've talked to you about that, but I, um, yeah, I, it's a, it's a long haul investment. And I, yeah, I, and think, I think that as well, I get that. Um, like with children you touch on there and it's not to say this is necessarily what happens with you and Madison, but a lot of, when I speak to guys a lot, uh, and it's where they've been brought up, not eating their greens, not having their micronutrients, not having their vegetables and stuff like that. And then they're sitting there trying to tell their children not to eat the, or to eat their greens. And you're like, well, you aren't having them, daddy. Oh, okay. And then they're sitting there on Facebook, scroll them through, and they're like saying, go to bed. Like, go off your phone and go to bed. And they're sitting there scrolling through when their child goes to bed. It's about setting the example for your children for the future. And my big thing and my big why, as you know, and you've seen the videos, is that my dad died when I was 15. Now, he went to the gym a couple of weeks before he died, and they told him he had 100% great health. And then he has a stroke and dies. And he had alcohol, but he wasn't really overweight. He worked out, not to the point I work out or anything like that. But this goes to show that being in a highly stressful world we live in, he was a manager of holiday parks, uh, very successful with that, kept getting headhunted to go to different parks, and he was successful at what he'd done. And then stress was a thing that stopped him being able to provide for our children. We want to provide for our children. And if we don't provide for ourselves first, then there comes a point when we're going to have to stop providing for our children as much as we like to admit it or not. So fixing your oxygen mask, as they say on a plane, is the best way to go about any of this. It is, it is, because I want to be there. You know, and I've told you, like, I, Madison has watched a lot of unhealthy habits, and now she gets to watch a lot of healthy habits, because I don't, and I, even with my friends, you know, of being, people say, oh, well, you're confident, and you, you come across confident, and I'm like, yeah, but let me pull back the curtain now, and I haven't been, I wouldn't have been able to do that probably as confident as I am right now without being like, okay, Ollie's in my, like, Ollie's in my corner over here, you know, and yep. you explain the science, behind it all that helps a lot the science behind yeah. it all it's explaining the science in a way that we could actually understand it because before i knew the textbooks and i don't know the textbooks inside out i'll read them every now and then like a little excerpt from them but to be honest reading a whole chapter from a textbook is great but i even get lost in it so it's knowing the science by explaining it in english and that allows you to understand what it is and allows everyone else to understand what it is without overwhelming yourself. Now that explain the what same when it comes to the changes. Explain what you have available because you have some links and stuff. Right? Uh, the first thing is just there's a health optimization kickstart which is free. So revitalization blueprint.com forward slash seven days and that is literally there's actually ten days of videos. So seven days and then I added three because they were already recorded. Why not put them out? And it will just give you one simple thing to do each day for seven days and you can implement that stuff. 
I have one day body upgrade.com, which is my book, which I was procrastinating about getting released and saying, Oh no, well I'll get to a publisher. And I was like, no, hang on. It's there. It's basically finished. I'm going to separate it into chapters, record a course and a video for each chapter. There's some bonus videos, which I shot with Rick as well over in Nashville. And that is there as well. That is $97. It's on one day body upgrade.com. And then, uh, I have got five spots left for one-to-one uh, coaching with me. Now, I say, is it health optimization? Is it accountability? It is what you need. It is, right. If you are one of these people that needs an uh, obsessive meal plan, I will draw a meal plan, but we won't let the obsessiveness impact your health. We will get your health fully optimized from it. If it's someone like yourself, and we need to work step by step, then we do that. It's, I, I don't mean this in a, nasty way at all it is me holding your hand and let's walk the journey together oh it's so holding the hand because um you know i was in a other situation where i was doing these meal plans and different things and i like i've talked to you about this like i had a moment where i was like you know when you obsess about food i'm going to just tell people when you obsess about food um and your mind starts playing tricks on you the best way i can explain it is looking at food and when someone's like you have to eat this amount of food every day it it's that feeling that you get right before you throw up. Like when you look at that amount of food and you think I have to eat this food and you get this disgusting feeling in your throat, like right before you get, when you have the flu before you're going to throw up and, and it just makes your stomach turn and you there's, it, it mentally breaks you down. Like that's the only way I explain it. it just mentally wreaks havoc on your mind and breaks you down. And there was a point where I was doing stuff and I had said to someone like, I, I just, and they're like, you just got to eat the food. You just got to like get it in and eat the food. I'm like, okay, you just don't understand. Like you just don't understand. And when I shared, I was afraid to share that with you at one time. And you were like, no, 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 no. Three minutes. Just, it's okay. Just one step at a time. And you literally did. you like, you took my hand and you're like, it's okay. We're going to get through this. I'm like, oh my gosh, someone actually, actually gets this. Like, I'm not, I, I didn't feel like an idiot. Video. I think after I about a week or two, you're like, you actually get me. And it's just amazing. It was. I was, I was like great. crying on the video because I was like, you, I was so grateful that someone didn't make me feel like a, like I didn't feel like an idiot mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like I was just being this diva that you were like, no, it's okay. It's okay, Katie. And that is worth its weight in gold when you're trying to make lifestyle changes to not feel like, okay, someone gets you. You're not an idiot like this. Okay. All he gets this. Okay. He's not going to judge me. That's the other thing. I'd be like, oh my gosh, is he going to think I'm a bad person? Is he going to, and you're like, no, 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 that's not what we're here for. You know, it's not what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what it's, it's about empowering you to know that you deserve to be healthy first off, but you also have the ability to be healthy. And a lot of people don't necessarily realize that at the start. My job is a coach and it's going to be like, we've got Simon Briley here, who is a good friend. He's, uh, well, he, he's, I don't know if he's pro triathlete now, but he was last year and now he's a very amazing triathlete coach. And that coaching is going to be a different structure, but he still is going to want his clients to know why they're doing certain things. You will get some people that will say, oh, I'm doing this run, I'm doing this ride, I'm doing this swim. That's cool. I'll do that. But I want people to know that they're building the knowledge up to be able to go and flee the nest, so, so to speak. And it is one of these things where in a year's time, as nice as it is, I don't want to be coaching the same person for over a year unless there is a specific accountability thing that someone likes just having me to answer to. I want them to know why they're doing things after a year and um, actually know what things are going to change in the future to the point of, okay, I feel a little bit low on energy. And then I will ask what they would do and they know what to do. It's just having the accountability of me to back that up. Right. So when we end this, you'll put your links below. Yep. So everybody can hit you up. And then I'm going to do something that only you've seen because people will be like, well, how much weight have you lost? I'm going to share that picture, that one picture with everybody, which is like totally might as well put me in front of naked in front of people. But I want people to see that that was done with like dieting and the little tweaks that you have made. Cause it blew my mind. I'm like, yeah. check this out. Like, I'm like, Ollie, look what happened. Yeah. Like, what? Like, where'd this come from? And it's of my, my middle and area. Well. 
Yeah. Well, and that's so funny because Steve had to, okay. So let me, let me tell about Steve. So Steve had to go out and buy a new belt and new pants. And he was, this is before Ollie and he was just not happy at all. And so Steve's I mean, mentality is, is yes, yes. <laughs> Got a little, and, uh, Steve's mentality is I just need to run the snot on the treadmill and I'll run it off and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, let's just do a little changes. Like all these have me do and that kind of thing. So now Steve has gone down two belt notches and he's actually put down coffee. He's been like a lifelong coffee drinker. He's put down coffee and, uh, within, and he just told me last night, he's, I said, I'm, I'm glad you put this coffee down. He said, I feel like the best I felt in forever. And, um, he's made changes to his diet and now he's the Himalayan salt. He, it was funny because you don't know we had Steve and I had this conversation last night. Steve's like, so I've been checking out that Himalayan salt stuff. And, uh, man, like Ollie had it right. Like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, welcome to the party, Steve. You're just like three months late, buddy. But so, yeah, so that's the really cool thing about it because Steve's watching what's happening and it's like flowing over on Steve too, you know? And, and uh, he's seeing some results and uh, happening too. So I think it's that's really cool. by example. Right. Like you're, you're leading by example. Madison's getting some knowledge off of it. She's keeping you accountable. Like you don't even need me to keep you accountable. She's she doing is. it for me. She I've, is. I've got, uh, it's, it's Batman and Robin here. She is because she actually, for those watching, Madison, my 16 year old daughter, like if I didn't take my picture last week, she's like, why aren't you taking a picture of your food for Ollie? Hmm? Yeah. Like you're and that's not to say that, that I say uh, pictures of food for every single meal. It's not that sort of thing. Right. It's just to get the idea. Yeah. And I'm like, Madison, I can tell him what I ate. Like, you know, like I, my, my food selection is so slim. Like, you know, I don't go much outside my box. And she's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, mom. So, yeah, it's, it's going, yeah, it's covering all of my family members in my house which is good to see because I don't want Madison to get the bad help that listen guys, those that are watching when I was Madison's age, maybe a little older, I was probably about 17, 18. Um, I was eating six carrots and five saltine crackers a day. And I'll post those pictures in there too. Um, I've always been a bigger bone kind of girl and everybody would always say, Oh, those hips are going to be great when you have babies. You don't want to hear that when you're 17. Don't say that to a 17 year old, <laughs> you know, don't say, Oh, well, you're a big bone girl. Don't say that to a 17 year old girl either. <laughs> Cause I knew I was a big bone girl and I knew I wasn't this five foot girl that was like a size two. I mean, I, I was living with it. Now I look back and I'm thinking, man, I wish I had that body back then that I didn't like. I wish I had that now, but I want to be healthy. I want to be a healthy yeah. version of, and whatever that is. And looking back, you know, I was ashamed to say, like, I'm a size 14. I've been a size 14 at my best in shape seven years ago. And I'm a size 14, like, at my worst in shape. I don't know how it happens, but that's what size I end up to be. Um, maybe I just had a little more, more muffin top three months ago that I got rid of now. But um, that's, you know, the scale. Everybody wants to watch that scale and that number. And I'm like, oh, I just, I don't stand on it anymore. Because I'm watching what's happening in person, and it's really, really cool. And I've only probably exercised, I mean, honestly, all we can say, I've probably maybe exercised eight times. Maybe. Maybe. Because yeah. you've told me, like, no. Yeah. And it's not to say that everyone will be like that. I say everyone is different. But right. But it's finding the minimum required dose we can get away with that works with your lifestyle, your schedule with business your schedule with friends and family and what you like as well because not many people will like running on a treadmill and things like that like not running people that are like simon that wants to just go and do an iron man like crazy individuals i like right. the, the pool and I, I like cycling i like running but i swim like like a drowning dog or something and <laughs> It's finding the exercise that you like best. If that is going for a walk with your dog, then we schedule walks with your dog in. And if that's just going to run for 20 seconds, 30 seconds with your dog, then run for 20, 30 seconds with your dog. If it's shoveling snow, then make sure you're where you live where there's plenty of snow. Right, right. Actually, it's sunny yeah. today because that's why you laugh. You were like, oh. complaining about riding your bike in the rain. I took a picture. I was like, dude, there's snow here, okay? This yeah. was just a couple of days ago. I was like, oh. Don't complain about the rain, Ollie. <laughs> There's snow here. Exactly. But I think that's what I, that's the biggest thing I wanted my friends and everybody know, and I'm going to actually share this over on Steve's band page, is I wanted them to know it's a custom fit. You definitely are custom, 
custom, custom fit. And what may have worked for me might not work for someone else, just like you said, but that's the really cool thing. And you're willing to talk to people. Like it never hurts to send you a message and just ask or just, yeah, just communicate. I'm, I'm paid. I'm paid. Perfect. Uh, well, that's what, what it's all about. Yeah. Hey, Ollie, thanks for hopping on here. I appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. And don't forget to drop your stuff in the comments. Okay. Oh, I've, I've popped them in the comments. If you want, oh, you I did? think you can probably edit the description and put them in there if you want. I don't know whether okay. that stops with all these algorithm things and stuff like that. You'll know more about that than me. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Well, thanks. And if anybody has any questions for you, just hit you up, right? Yeah. Just drop me a DM. I'm in the UK. So it's like seven o'clock now. So um, drop me a DM. If I'm in bed, then don't stress about it because I turn my phone on airplane mode. Like you guys should a decent enough time and <laughs> right. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Baby steps, baby steps, <laughs> baby steps. One step at a time. Right. A right. step forward is a step forward. Right, right. Hey, thanks, Ollie, and have a great evening. You too. Take care. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.